Oh wow. That's really comfortable. Welcome to Specific Love. Have you ever been in the middle of a project or maybe you just finished your project and it gives you a whole nother idea for a completely different unit but using the same similar concept? Well here recently I built a bunch of sawhorses to show you how to build them easily so you can use them outside whenever you need to. But that gave me an idea of building a patio chair using a very similar leg setup, kind of like the triangle shape. So let's get started. Now, if you look at a lot of patio chairs, a lot of them use the square setup. The legs go almost straight up and down. The chair is almost flat across the top. Of course, there's some variations to that, like the Adirondack chair, but I think that's more of a lounge than it is a chair. So I'm gonna use a very similar concept that I picked up from the sawhorses and try to build the legs at a triangle. I think this will look really neat. And because we know it's a real strong setup in sawhorses, this should also be able to handle a lot of weight and abuse. Now for this project, I'm going to be using some pine 2x4s and 1x3s. Now pine, unless it is pressure treated or coated in something, has a tendency to rot if left out in the elements. So for the end of my project, I'm going to be using urethane to coat this entire chair. Now if you don't want to go that route, you could always use cedar or possibly even maybe like a redwood. In both of those cases, they have a tendency to resist that rot. Now, First, we're going to take a 2x4 and we're going to cut it down into four 24 inch segments. And if you're really careful, you can get it almost perfect. Now, once you get all four pieces cut, go back and just measure them all together. And if by chance you have one, in this case, it's about an eighth of an inch shorter than the others. Now, it'd just be easier to go back and trim the others that eighth of an inch so that they're all nice and even. That eighth is not going to cause a big deal. Now that we have these cut down to about 24 inches, we need to make two additional cuts at about 30 degree angle from the ends. In other words, about like so. But these cuts, this cut on this end and this cut on this end need to be parallel to each other. So that way when it's sitting up, hopefully this will sit on the floor nice and flat and this will connect to the other piece just as well. Now if you look right here, you'll see that I didn't cut right to the very edge. And that way it still has plenty of strength holding together and it's less likely to split apart in the future. And once you have the first one cut, definitely use it as a template for the others. Now that we have these cut and sanded down, we need to determine which sides we want to the inside and which to the outside. This has a nasty looking knot on it, so we're gonna make this an inside piece. And this one's a little bit nasty, but I'm gonna be actually covering that up so I'm not concerned about that. We wanna make sure everything is nice and even on the top up here and on the bottom. To check the bottom, because it's kind of wide, get you an additional piece of wood you know is flat and just make sure everything is lined up. And once we have everything lined up on the bottom and on the top, we're gonna to screw this together. Now as you're screwing this together, use a second piece of wood to level it out so it's nice and even. And also keep in mind that the piece that's on the outside, on the top here, will be on the front. So when we do the second set, we have to mirror this. Now since we're using pine, I'm gonna pre-drill all these holes, but I'm also gonna do it on the inside so there's less screws seen. Next up, we're gonna be cutting out the back of the seat. To do that, we need two pieces at 30 inches and two at 17. And we're gonna cut all that from one more two by four. Now that we have everything cut out, I've laid it into a rectangle shape with the 17 inch boards on the inside. The quickest way to attach these together is to add some screws just on the ends and just make this a simple butt joint. But I'm liking the idea of minimizing the number of screws seen. So I'm actually gonna take the 17 inch boards and we're gonna do some pocket screws. Next step is to assemble the seat. I've cut down two pieces at 20.5 inches and one piece at 20 inches. We're going to assemble this 20 inch piece in between those two 20.5s. And again, using pocket screws. And if you do go to pocket hole route, remember to use the exterior screws since this will be sitting outside. Now when we go to attach the back to the seat, we could do it at just a perfect 90 degree angle, but that's not gonna be very comfortable. So we're actually gonna lean the back, back, about 10 degrees, and that should make it a little more comfortable. And to do this, we're actually gonna line everything up with the 90 degrees, and then we're just take a pencil mark and do a little reference mark across here so we know where everything lines up. And to do that, we're gonna take a speed square and we're gonna first line it up to the mark, 
that we just made. And then trying to pivot at this point, we're gonna move this so it shows 10 degrees. And holding that still, making sure it's still lined up with that mark right there. We're gonna make a second mark. And make sure you do this on the opposite side as well. Now we're gonna take the seat part and we're gonna line it up with that second mark we just made. And we wanna try and make sure that this top edge right here lines up with the back of the back. And as before, we're gonna to continue to try to put the screws on the inside to keep them from being seen. Now that we have the frame put together and the legs put together, you'll notice the offset of the legs will match nicely with the offset of the frame. Now we need to measure up real carefully and make sure everything is in alignment so we can attach these two together. Now that I know exactly where to put these legs, from this corner here, I'm gonna measure up 14 inches. From this corner here, I'm gonna measure up 12 inches. This side is gonna go for the bottom edge here, and this side is gonna go for this corner. Once everything is in alignment, it should be the correct angle for the chair. Now we've clamped it in place, and we're gonna to continue to put the screws in from the inside. Now to attach the second side, it's very similar with the same measurements, but there is one additional step. Now once you have the second set of legs clamped in place, it's a good idea to make sure you put this on a flat surface, because we want to test it out. And in my case here, since I put this together kind of quickly, it's a little off. Chances are there's a twist in the wood or something that, well, I didn't exactly compensate for. And this is the time to fix that. So we want to adjust these just slightly so that everything sits nice and flat. Now before I go any further, I wanted to give this a little test fit just to make sure all my measurements seem to be right. And it's got some loose pieces of wood sitting here on the seat, so let's give this a shot. Yeah! Alright, it's good height for my legs. The back feels like it should be about right. I'm a little concerned about these armrests though. I originally was going to do them like this and, um, yep, a little low. So thinking maybe if I raise it up and put one on top. Yeah, that fits good. So I think that's kind of the way I'm going to go with this. Now these are those moments you just kind of have to take your plans, toss them out, and just make up some ideas on the fly. So now I originally was going to have it nice and level across here so it covered up the ends of this board. And if I do lift it up like this, like I think will work, it's gonna have one of these boards still heavily exposed. I just don't think it's gonna look good. So, instead I think I'm gonna do a three step board here. I have been looking something like so, where this bottom board will be the shortest, the second board will actually extend back here to the same length as the bottom, same thing with the top. And that way it'll still give me my height I need, yet kinda keep that angled and unique flow going. Now I'm gonna go with 10 inch, 14 inch, and 18 inches, and I think that'll look good with the rest of the chair. Now to make sure we have all three of these boards nice and lined up, I've clamped an additional board to the backrest, and we're gonna use it as a guide. We're gonna line up each of these boards on top of the legs that we have here. We're gonna make sure we have them pressed in against the backrest so they're nice and even there, and pushed all the way back. And then we'll take an additional clamp, clamp them together so we can take them off and screw them together. I then positioned the armrest in place, clamped it down, and then removed the backrest so we can add some screws to the inside. Now that we have the armrest in place, it's a good idea to take a sanding block and go over all of the edges, because we don't want to accidentally hit something sharp as we're getting in and out of the chair. Now that we have the frame pretty much done, we need to add the seat and the back. And we're gonna do that with some one by three furring strips. Usually furring strips are a little bit hard to get in a straight, well, we'll just say they're not always in the best condition. That is unless you get there early when you first put out the stack. A lot of times you can get some nice, fresh, just crisp, straight boards that'll work perfect for a small project like this. So keep those in mind. Now before we get the furring strips down, it's a good idea just to hit them really quickly with a sander so we can knock some of those burrs down. Now that I have it all sanded down, I'm gonna need nine pieces at 20 inches long, that'll be for the back, and I'm gonna need seven pieces at 23 inches long, and that'll be for your seat. Now to help the seat in the back to stand out a little bit more over the frame, I'm gonna stain it in a traditional cherry, and that should let it pop just a little bit better.
Now while that's drying, I grabbed one of the scrap pieces and I wanted to pre-drill some holes in these so it's less likely for them to crack. So I set up just a temporary jig and I want to give this a shot. Now I'm just using an eighth inch bit with a built-in countersink and if I go slow, they seem to work out real well, but if I go fast, it might do some tear out. So we're gonna have to do these real carefully. We're gonna install the seat first, starting at the front. And I have some quarter inch spacers, because I want this to hang off the end about a quarter inch, and then I want each one of these to be a quarter inch apart. Now I'm gonna pre-drill each of these holes. Now as we work further back on the seat, it's a little bit harder to get under this armrest to pre-drill all these holes. Now I'm only using one and a quarter inch screws anyway, so there's a good chance it's not gonna splint the wood, so I'll probably just screw them straight in without pre-drilling. Now just like some other pieces of this build, I think I might have to modify one of my original plans. This very last board that I was gonna put way back here in the back of the seat, I'm gonna hold off on for just a moment. The spacing I put out may be just slightly larger than I originally planned, which makes this a really, really tight fit back here. Originally, I was just gonna notch this out and put this around the frame, but I think I'm gonna hold off on this, install the back, see how everything looks, and that'll determine if I want that piece or not. Now to install the boards on the back of the chair, I've actually flipped it onto its back to make it a little bit easier to install everything. And the top board is actually gonna be flush with the top of the chair. And we're still using the same quarter inch spacer. I have to remind myself often, instead of rushing through a project, that sometimes if I just take my time and look it over and think it through, that things will turn out better. In this case, it actually did. This was one of the spare pieces that was gonna go on the bottom, down on the seat, and I decided to wait on it, and it's actually going to work better for the back. I have a little excess space down here, and I'm still gonna have to trim it and stain it right on the ends, no big problem. So if you're keeping track of the total number of boards, there will be six on the seat and 10 on the actual back. All right, it's time to test this thing out for the first time. Oh, wow. That's really comfortable. Nice. I think I'm gonna enjoy this seat. Unfortunately, now we gotta do the, uh, the nasty job, putting the urethane on, so let's go do that. Now to help protect this chair, I'm gonna be using some spar urethane that's meant to be indoor and outdoor. Uh, first, I'll flip the chair upside down. I'm gonna seal the bottom of it first and then flip it over and do the top, and that way I know it's fully coated. Now I've given this a few hours to dry and even though it still looks a little bit wet, I just love how it has come out. Now, if you wanna add a little feature to it, you could always get a nice cushion, make sure it has the ties on it like this and you can put it on your seat. This will give a little added protection in the front so your legs don't bump into the hard wood and the ties will easily wrap around the, the frame that you have down here. So overall, this is an awesome chair. I love how it came out and I hope you get a chance to build one yourself. And as always, have fun building. Take 27. No, I'm kidding. <laughs>